Hello and welcome. My name is Eric Bonderland and Senior Director of Sales Engineering here at Sumo Logic. I'll be talking a little bit about the deeper look at Sumo Logic Cloud Sim Enterprise. Today's agenda, right, we'll talk a little bit about the Sumo Logic that you know and love, as well as talking about the Cloud Sim Enterprise, some of the integrations, configurations, and then ultimately we'll end up with some Q&A here at the end. So what is Cloud Sim Enterprise? Cloud Sim Enterprise is the latest acquisition of Sumo Logic. Completed in uh, November of 2019, Jask Labs joined Sumo Logic and formed the Cloud Sim Enterprise piece. We've spent the last nine months integrating the entire system, and there's several benefits to Sumo users and non-Sumo users, but none to, you know, some of the parts that we talked a lot about is a continuous correlation of uh, data across different security systems, as well as out-of-the-box content. Right? We bring out-of-the-box content that is live at all of our customer environments, so you benefit from uh, the experiences that all of our customers have in being able to have a robust set of rules immediately when upon starting up a system. We also bring the security analyst workflow with event management, so something that Sumo Logic fans have been looking for, that ability to be able to have a SOC team working out of a queue. We'll show you in a later part of the demo how that works as well as automating incident prioritization, right? So being able to triage and ultimately reduce the noise within your environment, allowing for analysts to be more effective at the jobs that they do. So on to the dashboards in Sumo Logic, right? So one of the power, one of the most powerful parts of Sumo Logic is that visualization of data. So what you're seeing here around the SOC KPIs, understanding my risks over time, right? Whether it's attack by stage, or maybe one of my favorites, the number of insights in the trend lines, as well as who is closing out what, right? These are out of the box, you know, available in the app store for you to be able to use uh, immediately upon starting up uh, Sum the Sumologic Cloud Sim Enterprise, but it's highly configurable. So if there's something that you want to see in here, you can continue to build and iterate off of these slides. Another example, right? Uh, looking at mean time to response, you know, as well as remediation, you know, these are the typical things that we see our clients looking for as part of their SIM purchase. Uh, you now the last part, right, how well is my SIM running, right, the insights closed by resolution, a great way to demonstrate to your team, hey, are we getting better, are we getting worse, right, so we can understand how effective our SIM is being at a glance of just a few uh, slides, or a few dashboards within our environment. Last and not least, right, the ability to take all of the work that you've done to date within Sumo Logic. So whether you have a scheduled search, right, that you alert out on, all that information can uh, be pushed right into Cloud Sim Enterprise as a signal. We'll talk a little bit more about what a signal is here, but in this case, right, I had an outlier uh, function for AWS, right, it would generate alert. Well, now in this case, it will push that alert automatically into Cloud Sim Enterprise which will allow for Cloud Sim Enterprise to then go ahead and correlate it with other security alerts within the system. The advanced correlation allows you to do multiple things, right? It leverages the power of existing Sumo Logic, but also is married to the uh, correlation engine that exists within Cloud Sim Enterprise. So let's take a look at the Cloud Sim Enterprise a little bit more. So one of the things we did, right, we tried to reimagine how we approached the security analytics or the SOC analyst job function. Right here, I can take a look at everything within my environment, right? I'm focused mostly on the triangles there in the middle to understand, hey, where are the threats within my environment, but also to understand, hey, how, what is the health of my system, right? I can see all my records on that middle band as well as that outer band in the blue telling me how well my, re my raw records are coming in. When really the, what the story of this page is trying to tell me, if you look at the top left, right, uh, of the 2 million records that came in over the last 24 hours, turned into 65,000 security alerts, right, of varying severities, we ultimately turned it into five things that we need to pay attention to. And one of the things that's a differentiator for uh, Sumo Logic, the ability to be able to look at, over, look at data over a period of time. In this case, the system is all constantly looking back over a period of two weeks to understand, hey, what is this user? What is this host name? What is this IP address done? And is there anything that relates to it that needs to be displayed? And so that's constantly picking up that information as we go through. And what it ends up being, right, it turns into a team collaboration effort, right? I can start to have my SOC live in this page where 
I can have different categories of information that we need to pay attention to. In this case, you can see across the top, everything from new all the way to tier three and closed. I, my analyst can be able to work out of this. We can see who's running something, how long it's been there. Right? This gives my team the ability to work out of a work queue and ultimately work as a team. So let's click into one of these insights. In this case, right, I've clicked into this initial access and persistence. You see here on the right side, I have four activities or four signals as we call it, a proof point tap, a checkpoint, uh, threat intelligence, and a crowd strike event, right? What has happened is the system picked up these four activities, tied it back to that IP address you see on the left side and said, hey, here's an insight that an analyst needs to pay attention to, right? It occurred over a period of 10 minutes. As I mentioned before, this can look scale back to 14 days looking for that low and slow behavior. In this case, right, it's a high-speed phishing attack that is happening in near real time. Let's say I want to dive a little bit deeper here, right? I click in one level deeper. I now am into the proof point tap data. I've brought all this data into one spot so that I don't have to have an analyst going to multiple systems, remembering logins, opening up 15 browser tabs to try and do their job. I've brought all that information into one spot. Furthermore, I've normalized that data, which means that I can then understand that, hey, source underscore destination IP is my source destination IP address for any technology, right? It's not just one technology, makes it a lot easier when we get into that search functionality to be able to pivot around and find out, hey, what else do I need to know about this? Lastly, right, one of the things we can do from our enrichment service is we can start to pull additional information in as part of the exercise. In this case, right, you see I've pulled in an NS lookup. I've done a Power, uh, PowerShell script to understand who was logged into the system, as well as you know, gone out and pulled, uh, in this case, CrowdStrike. These are automated actions that will fire every single time an insight is triggered within my environment. I've seen people get very creative with this, right? We have people who are doing AWS lookups, right? Uh, other, other cloud look like, lookups like uh, Carbon Black, as well as threat intelligence integrations with some of the main providers. I now have a consistent method for my SOC analyst to be able to provide the same level of data for every an insight regardless of what is going on. So I get that consistency that I need, that repeatability. And the other part is we look at every single piece of data that comes through. There is no sampling on this, right? So whether it's a low severity, uh, a grouping of items to a high severity of items, right? They all get looked at the same way consistently. So whether it's my most senior analyst or my most junior analysts who are looking at it, I'm presenting the same level of data and detail and ensuring that they have all the information necessary at their fingertips. And so as I want to start to pivot down further, right, if I want to go in and provide a record search, as I mentioned before, all the data is uh, normalized. So regardless of the source that it comes into, right, it, it will show the same way. So I can go and search for an IP address, a file hash, a username across multiple technologies, right, without having to understand field names. I can simply just type it in. That information will be pulled up on the screen, allows me to be able to do the record search right here within Cloud Sim Enterprise. My alternative is also to be able to automatically pivot back into the Sumo logic that you know and love and be able to do all the same searches. So not only do you have the raw records there, you also have the normalized records. So again, I can provide, I can perform that search and be able to see it in multiple ways, right? Which enables an analyst to be able to do uh, deep threat hunting within the platform. So let's talk a little bit about integration. So what do I do you know, when I've discovered that, hey, I've got something on my hands, right? If you notice on the left side of that uh, previous screen, right, there were a few action buttons that I could take. So as I sort of work my way down from the top, I can click actions. These are configurable actions uh, that I can configure within the system. So whether I'm sending it to a source system, I'm sending it to a collaboration system, a ticketing system, Right, these are two clicks, right? Click to say where I wanna go, click to acknowledge it's going, and the system will send all the data to whatever that receiving system is. I also have the ability to be able to update the status. So you can see here, I have five uh, different status fields, right? And we saw that on one of the previous slides uh, in the workflow board. You can configure your workflow, workflow board as it fits best for your environment. I can assign it to myself, I can assign it to a group. But ultimately, right, what I end up doing right down at the bottom, I can start to add different tags. So if I want to add metadata to be able to search against something, right, so in this case, I, I'm going to flag this one as phishing. 
as well as I can then start to add my notes as to what has been done. The benefit here, let's say a week, two weeks, whenever it is, something else happens on this host IP address. You know, let's say we've closed this one out, but then, you know, all of a sudden something happens again. I can very easily see the history of what was done previously by just clicking on that entity ID and being able to look at the past cases, or in this case, the past insights, and actually look at the notes and understand without ever having to pivot to another system to understand uh, what the resolution was. So let's talk a little bit about configuration. So as I mentioned previously, right out of the box, we do ship with predefined rule sets, right? Those are available for everyone to use as is, uh, but we do recognize that most environments will have the need to tweak and tune based on their environments, as well as be able to create their own content based on whether it's internal applications or specific use cases that appeal to them. All of this is done here within the UI. This is something that all of our customers have access to, right? Once you understand how to uh, use the environment, very easy to be able to tweak and tune these rules. As I mentioned previously as well, right? We do ship updates to rules. So if you have a rule that's in place and you haven't touched it and Sumo Logic is going to update it, we will push those rules out. It will update your rules uh, if they're in the default state. If you've made a modification to any of these rules, it will not override that uh, modification. It will actually push the new content in the disabled state and leave your customized data in an enabled state. So as we dive in, right, several rule types that we can talk about, something as very simple as a match rule. When I see something, right, you generate a signal all the way down to a chain rule where I can start to, mul I can link multiple things to an activity, right, so that I can start to call out some of those step-by-step -step attacks that I wanna be able to identify. All these are configurable again within the UI. So as you see here for one of these rules on the left side, I can write the, the logic. Um, again, having the normalized fields makes this considerably easier. I don't have to understand what fields they are. We typically map to about 20 fields, maybe 30 in any given technology, and they are consistent across the board. In this case, right, I see that it's a uh, you know Sumo Logic and it's a rare GIS guard duty alert, right? And on the entity, I'm going to you know follow all the descriptions and pull the dynamic fields out of it. So this is sort of the, the tail end of what we showed before in terms of taking something that already came out of Sumo Logic, right? This is the rule in terms of how the system is going to interpret it and allows the system to be able to display this information very easily within our in our system. Lastly, right, for those items that uh, we know are issues, right, the known bad issues that we want to be able to track, I can write very specific rule sets uh, in custom insights to match uh, the severity of those items. So in this case, right, I've identified a port scan followed by brute force and ultimately a brute force success. If I see this attack in this exact order, right, I want the system to take action immediately and generate an insight. So you have the flexibility of being able to determine when the system bypasses the adaptive system signal clustering engine that is trying to piece this all together and tell it, hey, if I see this specific combination, I want you to take immediate action. So there's two main flavors of being able to tell the system how to create these insights. Again, it's ultimately up to the end user as how, what they want to do. But this, again, allows you the flexibility to either be able to tune something specifically for your environment based on your variables or for something that may be a homegrown application where you want to build the rules uh, explicitly based on that, right? The, the freedom and flexibility is here to be able to do so. All right, thank you very much for your time. Now we'll move on to question and answers. <laughs> 